they grow almost as big as a small car part and this is the part that it's really important you can see why they call them a saddle tail snapper that's a little bit better okay so this morning i'm going to um, do a little bit of what i call gliding uh, gliding's not new um, but generally it's done in shallow water uh, I think Steve Starling was the first guy I heard many years ago talk about gliding for flathead in uh, relatively shallow water. I've got seven to eight meters here and I've got a, uh, I'm going to start with a, a squidgy wriggler, um, something that um, does have a little bit, a little bit of presence, but um, sort of more snack size. Hopefully there might be a finger mark or something like that uh, down there. I've marked up a little bit of life uh, and I'll, um, I guess I'll go through the steps of what, um, what I, called uh, you know deeper water gliding so basically it's a cast out um, i'll try and let the the uh, lure free fall to the bottom much as i can but i like to keep an eye on that line in case it gets hit on the way down the line's gone slack so it's on the bottom and then to glide it's really simple all it is is one, two, three, four, five, you know, anywhere from two to 10 turns of the handle. And the important part, and this is the part that that's really important, is I don't let the soft plastic free fall back to the bottom. I let it fall under tension. And what that does is it makes it glide down rather than just plummeting down, more of a natural look. What I find with gliding is that I often get a hit uh, on the wind. It's a 50-50 because it's not a fast wind. It's not, a, it's not an erratic wind. It's just enough to make the soft plastic um, deliver its action. Enough to make a bit of a presence in the water. Most times with a more aggressive retrieve, you'll find that the, the strike comes on the fall this is both, um, and I, I can assure you that when the strike comes on the wind, it's, um, it certainly gets the adrenaline going, particularly when you hit a big fish. It's something that um, is different than most other techniques. For this in a little bit deeper water, you're never quite sure what you're gonna hit. So if I know I'm chasing things like uh, grana or um, some of the, the, the smaller species, some of the, the species that might not have um, any dentures that will um, will quickly wear through leaders, I'll use uh, 10 pound, uh, sometimes less in leader. Here today I'm using 20 pound fluorocarbon. It's a Schneider fluorocarbon line and uh, matching it with 20 pound braid. With gliding, you've got to have a, a, a fair amount of patience. It can take some time to get to the bottom. If you're finding it's taking excessive time then you might need to consider uh upping the the weight of your jig head the whole idea is to make it look as natural as possible as a bait fish or a usually a prawn um, is what i'm trying to imitate and a prawn sort of just slowly gliding to the bottom so this technique also you know requires a fair bit of you know distance casting you're trying to sit back from the fish um, cast to them and then work through them in shallower water it's not so much of a big deal i mean you're, you're staying your distance so that you don't spook them but in this water here because of the angle of the line in the water you do need to give yourself some distance you know if if i was sitting over the top of a fish i, I can't get that that lure to glide so i do need to sit back so i i can't watch the fish on the sander so every now and then i'll if i'm not getting any attention i'll creep forward and have a look see whether the fish is still there or the life's still there and if they are then i'll just you know quietly creep back again and and try and get my casting to uh to work through where they're actually sitting oh there we go first fish of the day i was trying to put on a bit of a turn What have we got? I've got a feeling it might be a Trevally. 
And it is. So there we are, first fish on the squidgy wriggle tail using the glide technique. He's uh, not particularly big Trevally, probably standard for, uh, for the pups that get through the channel here. They do get much, much bigger than this. All right, let him go back to grow a bit bigger. All right, so I've got my Holt swim prawn with a little bit of scent added to it. And we'll see how that goes. It puts out a different type of vibration. Um, I really like these in, in uh, these applications. So um, full confidence that if there's a fish there, it's going to take a fancy to it. Okay, I just want to be able to drop it right back to the bottom. What do we got? Probably another Trevally. Oh no, another nanny guy. Also known as a satyr-tail snapper. It is actually a tropical snapper. You can see why they call them satyr-tail snapper, the dark saddle on the tail here. And uh, very tasty. Uh, this one's not size. Uh, we'll um, tag him, let him go. I've just popped the other side of where we were to cast from a different angle. I'm picking up the odd fish here or there, but there's uh, not much in the way of quality about it so just changing the angle just a little bit well, it feels a little bit well, it did feel a bit better it does feel a little bit better I'm a little bit confused <laughs> i think so was it that was the part of the problem oh. <laughs> A remora. That's why I was confused. These guys hang around with uh, sharks a lot, particularly big sharks. So the bigger the remora, generally the bigger the shark. Also with rays and other large fish. We'll let this guy play himself out. And um, I'll show you a little unique adaptation they have to be able to um, hitch a free ride. So these are referred to as remora or suction fish, sucker fish. They've got a, these uh, like fins that they can, they can move. And what they do is they attach themselves to, uh, to large fish like sharks and big uh, manta rays and things like that. And they can hitch a rod. And then whatever, whatever scraps that those large fish cough up, I'm going to get the hook out of this guy. Whatever scraps those larger fish cough up, these guys can detach themselves and, and go for a feed. It's not a particularly good sign that there's one here because this guy's well, not, definitely not the biggest remora I've seen, but it's a good size. So you, uh, I can just start to imagine what he was attached to, and it could be swimming around here, which is probably why the fish have been shut down for the last uh, three or four casts. Quite often fish will shut down if they know there's something around that's going to eat them. But we'll get this guy back on the water and let him go about his way. Oh, that's a bit better. That's a little bit better. Not taking too much drag, but I got the drag done a little bit tighter because I am using 20 pound gear. <laughs> Sister cod, another gold spot cod. This gold spot's actually size. It's uh, about two, three centimeters over uh, over what's legal. He's got a little bit of meat on him, but um, to have a proper meal, I like him a little bit bigger, so I'm happy to tag and let this guy go. All right. This spot here is a couple of fish. Not a lot. A couple of fish hanging about eight meters down, so I'm going to do a little bit more gliding through this patch here. It's some open rock and a little bit of rubble. There's a rocky ledge here as well. The tide is about to turn, so we won't have a lot of time. We'll make the most of it. Oh.
Might be another Trevally, maybe. I'm hoping for something a bit better, but certainly peeling some line off. You know, gliding is a, I, I, I guess it is a bit of a finesse technique. So when something does hit and peel line off like that, it, it does wake you up. Should see leader very shortly. That's coming up. There's leader. Yeah, another Trevally. Hard to believe they they grow almost as big as a small car. This guy's got a lot of growing to go yet, so we'll let him go and um, see you maybe in a few years. See you, buddy. Gone.